one of the biggest things that I often get asked is, how did you know you wanted to be a priest? That call, I think for so many people, is a mystery. What does, what does that mean to be called? When I think back in my own life, uh, I can think of a couple things. Part of it is I just always wanted to be a priest. I, I can remember all the way back to third grade, uh, our teacher asked us to write down on a card what uh, you wanted to be when you grew up. And that was the first time I think I wrote or said out loud that I wanted to be a priest. And I don't know if I really knew why I wanted to be a priest at that time. It just felt like inside of me, uh, what father did was, was kind of cool. Uh, he, I saw him up at the altar at church and he wore these flowing robes and, and people like always wanted him to sit at their lunch table or to have him come over to their house or whatever. And so there was something about him that just struck me. It's like, there's something about that guy. And, and I just felt that I wanted to be that too, even though I didn't really know what a priest did or, or who a priest really was. I was drawn to that, even as a third grader. Later on, throughout my junior high, senior high years, I didn't want to be a priest anymore. Uh, I was thinking about being a, a lawyer or an attorney. I wanted to be a judge um, because I really felt the call to pursue truth and justice. Like that just stirred in my heart that I wanted to fight for what was right and I, I wanted to give myself to what was true. And so that really motivated me. That's like who I was. I suppose it's like if you really feel a passion for playing soccer or for dancing or for whatever activities you like to, video games, whatever you like to do, you just feel it inside of you. And that was kind of me. I just felt like I want to do something like this with my life. And then when it was time to graduate high school, like 11th or 12th grade, I was thinking about that and I'm like, you know, I don't know if I could really give my life to that. So I think I, I, I'm gonna go back to that call when I was a kid uh, to the priesthood. And one of the things that I realized as I was getting ready to be ordained then after seminary, I had a memory all the way back to first grade. And I remember sitting in my desk working on a worksheet and father came into the classroom. I went to a Catholic school and he was telling us about what it was like to be a priest. And I remember him saying, well, you have to be, you know, average intelligence. You have to be pretty healthy. You have to enjoy working with people, all of these things. And when he said you had to be pretty healthy, I remember I felt my heart sink within me because when I was in first grade, I was always missing school. I had the flu, I got bronchitis, whatever it was. And I just felt sad, but I never thought about being a priest. But when I was told I couldn't maybe be a priest, it made me sad. So as I was thinking about that many, many years later, I realized that's how God called me. He planted a desire in my heart. I didn't know it up here. I knew it here. And, and I felt then either pushed towards it or pushed back from it. And it was those feelings like the waves of an ocean that helped me know I was being called to be a priest. And now I can't imagine anything else. Being a priest is so much more important than anything that I do. Um, so this call to the priesthood, I thank God for giving it to me because I don't know who I would be without it. My call to the priesthood kind of unfolded in several little moments. There wasn't like one definitive moment, um, but several that kind of just kind of built little bit by little bit. And the kind of the very first moment I remember was that when I was little, I had just made my first communion and I would kind of play mass with my siblings. And so like, I remember like, okay, father does this. I want to be a priest. This is how I can be like father. So it was kind of like the very first moment, like, okay, I think I could be a priest. And I'm trying to like sort of do that. The kind of like next moment when that kind of continues to unfold uh, was being an altar server. I remember asking Father Hunky, our founding pastor, if I could be an altar server two years early in third grade at that time. And he said, well, if you pray a lot, I might let you. And I thought, well, that sounds hard and like a lot of work. So I just waited till fifth grade. But doing that from middle school throughout high school was just very helpful. Kind of being close to the altar, having that kind of responsibility and that reverence to 
to serve Christ in that way. And it just kind of be, also kind of continue to feed that desire, that kind of wanting to be a priest in various ways kind of throughout all of those years. A third moment, this would kind of be more like a more definitive call, I guess, in some ways. Father Hunky told me one day, I think you could make a good priest. And so just hearing that kind of solidified something within my heart, like, okay, it's not just for me, but something else. Um, like there's somebody else who's noticing this. So those were kind of like the three kind of moments, little calls as it were that kind of built until I reached kind of my senior year of high school. I was like, well, this like wanting to be a priest isn't going away and I need to kind of explore this. Um, so I had reached out to the vocations director. Um, I had visited the seminary, had met the seminarians and just like the Lord was calling me to enter a seminary and really see or to kind of test it as it were. See like, is Jesus really calling me to be a priest because that's the place for it. One moment in particular in prayer on the Feast of Thomas Aquinas my first year, where we just felt like this is what the Lord is actually calling me to in that um, he had sort of prepared this in various little ways. I had done my best to kind of say yes to him in those little ways, leading up through middle school, throughout high school. And then he was sort of like speaking more definitively toward this and like calling me onward. So when I was little, when I was kind of first played mass, when I was an altar server, um, hearing Father Hunky's kind of encouragement toward me, um, those were all like the internal desire, the kind of that feeling within, within me was kind of reaching out toward the priesthood. And then with Father Hunky especially, it seemed like somebody else is noticing this and they're starting to come together. Um, but it wasn't really until I entered seminary and I had an experience in prayer where the Lord like called me. I heard his voice actually speak to me for the first time about this. And so it was no longer something that I just wanted or I thought like I might be making this up, but rather it was coming from the Lord and that he had sort of been like working within my heart he had chosen now to sort of call that um, into being in a new way. You know, my call to the diaconate was um, really just, if you will, a continuation of my call and my relationship with God. Uh, at the time, I, this was about 20 years ago, and uh, I was going to daily Mass at the time before I went to work. And every morning at daily Mass, there was a lady there because it was in a small, intimate setting. When there was a time for the prayers for intention, the priest would say some intentions, and then he'd open it up for anybody else that was at Mass because there was probably only about a dozen or so people there. And every morning, this lady would pray for vocations. And every morning she said that, my heart, something in my heart would just get a little rise, but... I don't know about anybody else in responding to the call. Um, I just missed it. <laughs> but then, you know, there'd be the next day, and she'd say that, and my heart would do a little jump, and I'd just miss it. So I'm, I'm not real good at answering the call the first go-round or the second go-round. or anything. And this went on. And so um, then one day uh, I had heard that uh, there was uh, going to be an evening where anybody that might be interested in the diaconate, because, you know, I'm going through that, the diaconate came to mind, and I, like I said, I would dismiss it. But there was going to be an evening where people could come, and uh, if they were interested, hear about what the diaconate was about. But anybody that knows me knows that I love to hunt, and I like to do a lot of other things. And it just so happened that the night for uh, the to hear about the diaconate program was on the week that I had already taken off for vacation and was going hunting out into western Nebraska. I looked at my calendar and I went, I guess I'm going to miss that. And I went hunting. And I took the week off and I got out there on the weekend and um, you could have three, you get three turkeys. I bought three permits and I had success like I had never experienced before within the first day or two. I already had three really nice toms, and so I'm sitting there at the campsite going, let's see, I could stay out here camping this week, or I could go home and get some things done at home because I had taken the week off of work. <laughs> so on the way home, I thought, oh, you know what? That thing about the diaconate, it's like Tuesday or Wednesday night. And maybe I'll go. Peggy and I went to it. It was for uh, the couples uh, to go to and learn about. When it was all done and we stopped, to get some coffee and just talk about the experience. I, when we sat down for coffee, I just told Peggy, I said, you know what? It wasn't anything that was said specifically that really touched my heart or jumped out at me or anything. What happened was, I don't know where this is going to lead, but I have this total 
peace in my heart, and I just know this is where I need to be. I have no idea where it's going to lead, but I have this overwhelming peace like I've never sensed before in my heart. Uh, eventually, then I was uh, invited to start the program and went through the uh, the process to become a deacon. But I can tell you, all the way through the program, all the way through the next five years, all the way till ordination, I continued to have that peace that this is where I know I need to be. Since then, I have continued to have that peace that this is where I believe God wants me right now. Where's it going to lead to? I still don't know. <laughs> Well, my name is Sister Mary Chiara, and I'm a school sister of Christ the King in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, my my first encounter with the Father's love for me happened um, just in a really gentle way when I was a little girl, um, through my dad, actually. he Dad had a holy hour really early on Saturday mornings, and often he would wake me up and say, I'm leaving in 15 minutes if you want to come. And I would hesitate, but then I'd usually roll out of bed and tumble down the stairs and dad would be in the kitchen drinking coffee and then he would hold out breakfast for me, which was actually just dessert from the night before. Um, so this, and then we would, we'd go off to um, adoration with Jesus and then mass afterwards. And um, I realized that as a little girl that I was kind of lured into this time of adoration with my dad um, and went more so because of the cookie um, and time with my dad rather than being with Jesus. But the Lord used that um, because as I continued to grow, I realized that I wanted to go and be with Jesus for more than just the sweets or more than just being with my dad, that the Lord's love for me was so good that it satisfied me infinitely more than cookies or my dad's love even could. And and that's true for all of us. Like the Lord, his love is so particular and it satisfies the deepest desires of our heart. Um, and then the second encounter, um, well, not second, but second like large encounter with Jesus um, and the moment when I really was pretty sure that he was calling me to be his, his spouse. Um, I was in high school and at a Steubenville conference. So a weekend with a bunch of young people in high school, like 4,000 people on a college campus. And one evening, the priest brought Jesus in the monstrance to the altar. So that this big stadium with 4,000 people filling the state, the stands. And Jesus was on the altar on the floor. And um, there was just time for like quiet prayer. And then the priest brought Jesus in the monstrance around the stadium to be close to us. And, and as I followed the monstrance with my eyes, followed Jesus, um, I looked at the people around me and I noticed that they were experiencing Jesus because I, I could tell because they were laughing or, or some were crying, um, smiling, like by their bodies, they were showing me that they were experiencing Jesus. But I looked at myself and I felt nothing. I looked down and like my heart was like a rock in my chest and I was mad. And I told Jesus, I've given you this whole weekend, which is a really big deal. And you're not doing anything. And as I was telling Jesus about this and showing him my anger, I opened my eyes and right in front of me, like right here, the priest had brought Jesus in the monstrance. And as I looked at Jesus and I felt him look at me and I was overwhelmed by his love for me, his particular love for me. And, and I asked him, Lord, how can I respond to your love? And I heard him not with the ears of my body, but with the ears of my heart say, give me yourself. And when I heard him say that, it was like his desire matched my desire and they were one. And that was exactly what I wanted. So as I continued to grow in understanding that I am a daughter of the father, I began to recognize that Jesus was calling me to be his bride, to 
to give every part of myself to him and to be a mother for all his children. And, you know, the Lord has a particular plan for each one of us because he loves us particularly. And just as he gave himself on the cross and then in the Eucharist to each one of us today, we too can give ourselves back to him. And that love will define and decide everything.